Assalamualaikum and welcome to Ahlul Bayt Live on Ahlul Bayt TV. And uh, tonight we are going to be discussing the similarities in the personalities of Jesus alayhi salam and Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his holy progeny. Uh, and this is in light of, of course, many of uh, these websites that uh, you get online that are showing or trying to show how different Jesus alayhi salam was from Prophet Muhammad uh, alayhi salam. Uh, and uh, usually these Christian websites are trying to show that they are diametrically opposed and uh, very different in personality and uh, mission. Uh, but tonight we're going to be looking at some of their similarities and also, inshallah, hopefully oh, be... Hopefully... Okay, um, we also have with us Sheikh Faiz Jafar from Canada, as you may have heard. Um, so uh, this will be by Skype and uh, hopefully we'll keep the, the line running. Um, tonight we're also going to be uh, hopefully discussing uh, the second coming of Jesus, alayhi salam, uh, where we see that uh, he's not just the gentle shepherd that he was depicted to be by the early Christians. So I'm just going to see if we can get through to uh, Sheikh Faiz Jafar. If we do have any uh, hiccups in the connection, inshallah, we'll just continue with our discussion. I think that he may have got just cut off. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Yes, okay. So he's, he's just got cut off. So we'll start by um, just highlighting, obviously, a couple of uh, basic points, and I'll bring these uh, to uh, the Sheikh when he comes back online. Um, first of all, we can see that both um, Isa alayhi salam and the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu were they, they were teaching about monotheism. They both came to teach about worship of one God, or we could say one transcendent reality that lies beyond multiplicity. Uh, and to try to get across a message to humanity that uh, multiplicity or the immediate reality that we see in front of uh, ourselves is, is not the ultimate reality. I think that we may have the Sheikh back. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh Fez. Sheikh Fez Jafar? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, Salaam alaikum. Uh, it's cut off again, I think. Okay, can you... Can you hear me? Ah, he's getting cut off. This line might not be good tonight. We'll see how it goes. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum. I don't know if he's able to hear us. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam alaikum. Sorry, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. We'll see. We'll see how the line goes. No, the the connection's not good. Um, We'll just continue with our uh, discussion, inshallah. We'll try a few more times, and if not, then uh, I will just run through um, some of the similarities uh, between Jesus, alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny. Um, so, although, as we know, the, uh, the concepts of God that were eventually outlined by various Christian groups after the death of Jesus, alayhi salam, although they established a different concept or framework for God, ultimately we see that Jesus and Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, came to uh, polytheistic societies, uh, very mixed societies, uh, with a message um, that there is one deity, there is, only, there is only one thing that is worthy of worship, thing in inverted commas, of course. Um, there is only one entity, there is only one deity that is worthy of worship, and that uh, anything else uh, in terms of um, certain angels or spirits or jinns at that time uh, that certain societies may have been appealing to uh, are, are not the ultimate reality. They're not the ultimate recourse um, to seek assistance. I'll just see if Sheikh is back. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Are you back at all? Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. 
Hopefully, inshallah, you'll stay online. I think what we... No, he's got cut off again. Okay, I think we'll have to uh, maybe try a couple of more times and then we'll have to uh, leave it um, with, with that connection. Um, so what they are trying to convey to humanity is not that there is just one God um, in a numerical sense, one God as opposed to many deities, but that there is a, the, there is a single reality, there is an ultimate reality. And that it is that ultimate reality that is worth knowing, we could say, that is worth endeavouring um, to understand and to comprehend. There is one reality that lies behind everything that we see at a surface level. And it is this one reality, you know, out of this one reality that everything is created. Okay, so Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Faiz, can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Can you hear us now? No, he can't. He can't hear us. So we'll uh, we'll we'll leave it at that, and uh, I will run. Uh, I'll just run through uh, the points for the next. Uh, section of the show, inshallah. Um, another uh, important point is that we see that um, bro both Isa alayhi salam and the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, they accepted um, the what we call the Old Testament as the word of, of God. Um, this is something that we also see in um, arguments today about the fact that Jesus alayhi salam is very different from uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny. Uh, what people who often argue for this are doing is that they are separating out uh, Jesus Christ, alayhi salam, um, as being different from the previous prophets. Um, they are saying, well, yes, you know, the Old Testament um, is very stringent in certain places, but the New Testament uh, is different and you know we follow the New Testament we don't follow the Old Testament uh, when in actual fact we look at Jesus salam, himself in what came to be the New Testament and we see that um, he honors uh, Prophet Abraham and Prophet Moses as well uh, he doesn't consider their missions to be invalid or to be any less than his own mission so he saw himself very clearly uh, coming from this uh, Abrahamic lineage. And again, just a, a reminder for those who may not be familiar with uh, the Bible, uh, it, it consists of what we call the Old Testament, uh, which consists of um, many uh, chapters, narratives, parables about the beginning of the world, um, and about various uh, prophets, and of course containing the Psalms as well of Prophet Dawood, and many other letters and so on, um, that contain stories of what happened to the Hebrews and um, words of wisdom for, for humanity. Uh, of course, it also contains a lot of symbolic language, which uh, many people now don't understand, and they take that symbolic language to be literal, and hence uh, we end up with very literalist readings uh, that are causing problems in the, in the teaching and discussion um, of the message and of religion. Another thing that is slightly problematic um, for the Bible is that uh, or at least the Old Testament, is that uh, the original Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, Tanakh as it is called, um, was composed in Hebrew. Uh, it was then translated into Greek and uh, it is this uh, Greek translation that is referred to, uh, that you know, Christians will refer to today. Very few Christians today will have a good understanding um, of the Hebrew that the Bible uh, was written in at the time and hence of course uh, the language and the message can also be lost. <clears throat> uh, so we have the old what Christians call the Old Testament uh, which is the Hebrew Bible that uh, Jews refer to and then we have the New Testament which is um, the gospel and uh, the, you know the chapters that are telling about 
uh, Jesus alayhi salam mission and also what is going to happen in the future inshallah when he returns and uh, and it is this that we inshallah hopefully will uh, be able to refer to uh, tonight as it is uh, quite interesting and revealing so we can see um, again uh, some similarities in both of their missions uh, is that they both taught humanity to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly. We can see in both texts, uh, in the Bible and also uh, in the Holy Quran, that uh, those who have an apprehension of uh, a transcendent reality, i.e. those who believe in God, are uh, required or requested to not, not compromise on how they orient their life, on how they you know, are rooting uh, their life, the reality in which they are rooting their life, the aims and objectives that they are striving for. Um, so you, know, you can't serve two masters as an example. And so we are required to dedicate uh, our lives to knowing this reality and also to serving this reality, serving this transcendent reality, this divine reality, uh, means implementing divine law and by extension uh, implementing justice as well on on the earth so we can see in the holy quran in chapter 98 verse uh, 5 where it says bismillah rahman rahim and they have been commanded no more than this to worship allah offering him sincere devotion being true in faith to establish regular prayer and to practice regular charity and that is the right religion. Uh, we can also see in uh, chapter 42, verse 13, where it is said again, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the same religion has he, Allah, established for you as that which he enjoined on Nuh, the which we have, uh, the which we have sent by inspiration to you, and that which we enjoined on uh, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, alayhum salam, namely, that you should remain steadfast uh, in religion, steadfast in deen, and make no divisions therein. To those who worship other things than Allah, hard is the way to which you call them. So if people are uh, immersed in devoting themselves uh, to uh, anything other than Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, if they are engrossed in loving uh, something other than a life, they are dedicating their lives uh, to that, then it is it's very hard for those people uh, to be called back to a path that is dedicated to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to apprehend and understand that divine, divine reality and implementing uh, that divine law and that divine way. It's very hard when all of us, we, you know, have um, worldly attachments in some way or another. And if being dedicated to the way requires that we let go of these worldly attachments, and that can be very hard. Uh, there are certain things that can be very hard to let go of. So this is what is meant here. And then, of course, it says, Allah chooses to himself those, uh, or chooses for himself those um, whom he pleases, and guides to himself those who turn uh, to him. So, of course, the Holy Quran is also saying that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on the condition of, of the hearts of the people and the intention of the people, uh, depending upon that, uh, then he will guide them to him. So then we can turn um, to the Bible. And uh, here it says in uh, the, uh, uh, the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 31, and it says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Now this is very interesting because, um, again, <clears throat> when we look at uh, contemporary types of, of, of Christianity, or let's say types of Christianity that have evolved over the last few centuries, um, we don't often hear uh, Christians uttering what we could uh, say is the um, Jewish equivalent of Surah Al-Ikhlas, you know, the, the Surah of Tawheed, uh, the Surah of the Oneness of Allah. But um, this is a very famous 
um, declaration um, in Judaism, and it's the first declaration um, that Jews must make um, in, in, in declaring their belief in God and, and you know, in the message that was brought by Prophet Moses, alayhi salam. So it is quite interesting that we see those around um, uh, Jesus coming and saying, you know, what is the first commandment? And so Jesus, alayhi salam, give, gives in response the the commandment that was given to the Jews. And he doesn't actually say that, well, the commandment for my followers is different. The commandment for, for Christians is different from this. He actually gives this as a reply to them. So he's, and he says, the first of all commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So um, for those who are, um, of course, following, trying to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, alayhi salam, um, it's very notable that he didn't move away uh, from the commandments that were given to Prophet Moses, alayhi salam. Incidentally, there are some very beautiful uh, recitations um, of this uh, declaration, Shema Israel, as it's called, um, and of course Israel being the tribes, um, the old Hebrew tribes mentioned in the uh, Old Testament. Um, and you can hear some very beautiful recitations of that um, on, online. It has also been recited um, in Arabic uh, by Jews from Yemen who speak predominantly Arabic. And then he says that the second commandment is that thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. There's no other commandment greater than um, loving God with your whole being and uh, then loving your neighbour as yourself. So we can see that both Isa, Prophet uh, Jesus alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad uh, alayhi salam, uh, were also uh, calling upon the people to put the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, central at, at you know, at, at central in our lives, to place that uh, love and focus for the divine centrally within our lives. And that love for the divine, again, should be um, reflected in our actions around us, with our hu fellow human beings uh, around us. How we actually cultivate that love for the divine and where our hearts are in position uh, in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is another question. And of course, um, in the works of Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam, there is a lot that is um, said about love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from um, recognizing uh, the influence of Allah in our lives, recognizing uh, the actions of Allah behind what we see uh, around us. So we have uh, both prophets calling to Tawheed. Unlike so many of the world's other uh, religions and ways of life that were calling to uh, multiple deities uh, um, that, that had a, uh, an amalgamation, a mixture of many different kinds of deities. Uh, unusually, um, from this line, they were calling to the realization and you know of the ultimate one reality, one divine entity. Um, and s both Prophet uh, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad alayhum salam also acknowledge the Old Testament, the Hebrew Testament. Um, and, and see that as legitimate. And they both have called for uh, us to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, with all of our being. And of course, that's a whole other program uh, about what that actually means in practice. So then we can see um, some uh, other similarities uh, between uh, Prophet Jesus alayhi salam and also uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, alayhi salam. When we look at the Bible and also after that when we look at the Holy Quran. Um, and this is the issue of um, human beings having been given the free will as to whether or not uh, they follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether they um, acknowledge that there is uh, 
Allah, whether Allah exists, they are free to acknowledge or not to acknowledge, they are free to follow or not to follow. Uh, but there are also um, warnings in, um, in both texts that it's going to be a great loss um, for those who choose not to uh, search for Allah um, and come to understand and dedicate one's life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, there is uh, free will, but there are also warnings about um, the loss to that person's uh, inner being um, that may happen if they choose to cut the divine out of their lives. And so we, we see um, in uh, the Bible, uh, we have John chapter 14, 21, where uh, Jesus Islam, says, He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loveth me. And that's very interesting because all, all of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, you know, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, have also said that the one who follows them is the one who practices the Sharia, the one who um, does what they do. In fact, there's an interesting uh, narration, I think it's from Imam Askari, salam, where someone was asking him about what is the difference between someone who is a lover of Ahlul Bayt and someone who is one of your Shia. And he said the difference is that those who just love us are those who just love us, but our Shia, our followers, are those who do what we do. They practice what we practice and they obey uh, our commands. And so we hear, see here again with Jesus salam, saying that, you know, mawadda, um, you know, this, this demonstration um, of love for Jesus comes through keeping the commandments. And then he says, and he that loves me shall be loved by my father, meaning God. So the one that loves Jesus salam, is the one that will also be loved by Allah. Uh, and then Jesus says, I will love him, I will love him and I will uh, make myself known to him. You know, uh, those who love Jesus will come uh, to know him. And again, we see something similar in the Holy Quran, where this, uh, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny says, if you do love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins, for Allah is of forgiving, most merciful. Uh, and this is in the Ali Imran, chapter Ali Imran, uh, and then it says in Ayah 32, say, obey Allah and his messenger, but if they turn back, Allah loveth not those who reject faith. Um, so humanity has the choice uh, to turn back against uh, God, uh, but and, you know, if there is absolutely no inclination at all, no love for truth, uh, no love for justice uh, in the heart of the person who is rejecting uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they are um, oppressors, then Allah is, will, does not love those who reject this belief and reject this faith. Uh, what we do find um, in the books is that, in the holy books, is that the definition and we can see this in Surah Al-Baqarah, that the definition of one who uh, does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we could say, you know, a kafir, one who covers the truth, is someone who also acts unjustly. So just as we have a believer, is someone who believes in Allah and uh, does amal al-salihah, does good deeds, uh, someone who disbelieves in Allah is someone who not only disbelieves but also does bad deeds and oppressive deeds um, as well. And this is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, uh, for them, there is no uh, love for them. Um, and so we can see that uh, another similar verse where Jesus alayhi salam says, um, I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same uh, brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Um, so, you know, if, if someone is, uh, if their heart is connected to Jesus alayhi salam, then their deeds will be the like of his deeds. They will, they will be fruitful. He says, if a man does not abide in me, he casteth forth a branch and it is withered. So his deeds won't come to anything. And uh, men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it will be done unto you. Again, very, uh, we see the same thing in Islamic teachings where, especially the famous hadith Qudsi, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that, you know, my servant does 
uh, Noah Phil supererogatory acts until I love him and when I love him then I am the the eyes with which he sees and the the hand you know with which he um, moves you know the foot with which he walks um, and uh, so again we see that uh, when someone is loved by God both in the in in the Bible and also in the Holy Quran when someone is is um, loved by God uh, then uh, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants their du'as um, assist them so that their actions are in line with his will and his um, his wish as well uh, and so Jesus says herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so you shall be my disciples as the father has loved me so I have loved you continue ye in my love if you keep my commandments so again Jesus is saying keep my commandments you know keep the commandments that I have told you uh, to keep you shall abide in my love um, so this is not again as um, as later certain later Christian theologians said, which is um, faith alone can can save you. It has to depend on on good works, and uh, and again uh, we see that um, also in the Holy Quran, um, where it, it says uh, something very similar. But we're running out of time to say that ayah, and I will continue with that ayah, inshallah, after the break. We're just about to go to break, so we'll see you again, inshallah, in a few minutes. Assalamualaikum, welcome back to Ahlul Bayt, live on Ahlul Bayt uh, TV. And tonight we are comparing the similarities uh, between Prophet Isa alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam and his holy progeny. Uh, and we are meant to be having uh, Brother Faiz Jafar from Canada on the line. Uh, and everything was perfect up to uh, before we went on air. And of course, once you go on air, um, that's when it all breaks down. So um, we were trying to get him online. Hopefully, inshallah, we will have him online <coughs> later in the show. Uh, but if not, uh, we will just continue the discussion. Do feel free to call in uh, as well with any questions or comments that you may have about some of the points that are being made. Uh, so just before we went to break, uh, we were talking again about um, <clears throat> some of the similarities in the message. Uh, that Jesus salam, makes and um, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, also makes. Um, and that is that, again, the hu humanity is free to decide whether they want to follow the commandments of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Uh, so humanity has been given um, free will as to whether or not they wish to uh, decide to follow Allah. And of course there have been warnings of the loss for that person if they choose to turn away um, from divine guidance um, and I think we should, again we shouldn't look at this in too much of a superficial way because of course there are many people who think that they are following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and behave in such a way that is anything but following him we know this is also a case with those who are following um, a, a, a particular deen. Um, so, as I said before, when we look at the definition of a believer, uh, we find that they are those who uh, believe in God but also do good works. They, they do saleh, amal as saleh, uh, righteous works. And those who disbelieve are those who uh, reject the um, understanding or the concept of a higher entity. Uh, but they also do bad works as well. They are oppressors and they glorify uh, themselves. So I think we're just, I'm just going to see if we have um, Sheikh Faiz Jafar on the line. He may be back. Asalaamu Alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm well, Alhamdulillah. I, I hope that we will be able to keep the line uh, clear, inshallah. In, inshallah, so as well. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, um, just uh, in fact, uh, for the last part of the show, I was just running through some of the, some of the points um, that uh, we were going to discuss, inshallah. But I, I was just touching upon uh, the points uh, about uh, us having uh, the message that Jesus, alayhi salam, uh, gave to humanity as well as the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him also gave to humanity is that humanity is free to follow 
uh, God if they want to or not. The only thing is that they have been uh, warned that if they don't, i.e. through in addition doing oppressive acts of oppression and glorifying themselves, then God will not love them. And um, we have these verses in um, the Bible as well as in the Holy Quran, uh, very similar verses where Jesus السلام, says that, uh, you know, if you follow my commandments, then I will love you and God will love you. And we have also in Surah Ali Imran, the Quran, where the Holy Prophet says, if you do love Allah, follow me, Allah will love you and uh, forgive uh, your sins. Uh, and then um, say, uh, obey Allah and his messenger. But if they turn back, Allah loveth not those who reject uh, faith. Um, so uh, this, this is one similarity we, we can see in, uh, in the message, this idea of, of humanity having free will as to decide whether or not they want to uh, follow the divine commands, but at the same time a warning of what's going to happen. And something actually, a point I was making is that, of course, we have many types of Christianity now, the famous doctrine of faith not works, you know, that mm -hmm. faith alone will, will, will save you. Whereas if we look in the Bible, we see that Jesus is saying that he that follows my commandments and keeps them, uh, then he's the one who loves me and, and he's the one that God loves. Uh, which is, of course, what we also find the Ahlul Bayt salam, saying to their followers that, you know, if you love us, then you will implement the commandments. It's not just a matter of saying that you love us. Right, right, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. Um, we see several times, for instance, within the whole of Quran, that Allah makes mention toward those who believe and those who do uh, good deeds. Um, and in reality, all of the prophets of God, they have come with uh, the same exact message in regards to not only believing with the heart, but also acting uh, with the body. It's uh, easy to testify something by the tongue uh, and to believe with the heart potentially, but that's demonstrated by our external efforts um, by obeying the commandments of God and the prophets. Uh, so no, absolutely, you're absolutely right. And all of the prophets have come down with this message of um, speaking toward obedience toward God. In reality, that's the essence and the uh, crux and the climax of the theology of all of the prophets that the religion of Islam believes in, and primarily the faith of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, and Jesus alayhi salam. Um, and we see these similarities and parallels uh, across their lives and across their teachings uh, that it's incredibly important to submit toward the Prophet in the same way that we submit toward God. Uh, Imam Ali, in the famous narration in um, Nahj al balagha he states, Al-Islam wa Taslim, that the religion of Islam is the religion of submission, submission toward God, submission toward the Prophet, submission toward the divine authorities. So one can submit toward God seemingly, but that's not really absolute submission an absolute proclamation of one's faith, unless they're following in ordin in ordinance and in accordance with um, their prophet. So without a doubt, there are numerous similarities between Jesus alayhi salam and the Holy Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I was also, uh, I, I said uh, just in the previous part of the program that part of the reason of looking at this is that when you do uh, look on, you know, d d different sites uh, with regard to Jesus alayhi salam and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his holy progeny, of course there are many sites that are trying to demonstrate, especially um, Christian sites that are trying to demonstrate that uh, the Holy Prophet was uh, absolutely the polar opposite of Jesus alayhi salam um, and you know they will they will list several several points to show mm. that uh, you know to show how different they were and this is another reason why we're, we're discussing this tonight is to actually show their similarities and of course inshallah I hope we will have the time to cover the points of uh, very interesting points that someone has raised about Jesus second coming um, where you know he Again, he's not just a pacifist, you know, as, right. as uh, the, the Christians like to depict him. Um, and another thing that, uh, another point that people argue is that um, taking Jesus, alayhi salam, out of the prophetic context, you know, in which he came, 
is actually incorrect. So again, a lot of Christians will say, well, he's not like the previous prophets. The whole point of him is that he was different and uh, you know, we don't listen to the Old Testament, we have the New Testament, you know, this is why we follow the New Testament, this is why we are Christians. When in fact Jesus himself uh, has said that, you know, he honors Prophet Abraham, he honors uh, Prophet Moses, uh, and he is the seat of the Old Testament as well. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, no, you're absolutely right. Um, a couple of points that you mentioned earlier on. Um, in regards toward the Prophet and Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Jesus, in regards to their similarities of not being uh, pa pacifists, we see that absolutely every single Prophet they stand for a certain ideology, um, and what they stand for in reality, and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt as well, is a is to demonstrate all of the sublime metaphysical qualities that we see. So not only is the Prophet or Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Jesus Alaihissalam in like in the idea that they're both emphasize God's mercy and compassion and justice and so on and so forth. But at the same time, they stand up against injustice and they yeah. stand up against oppression. And uh, in light of a lot of the socio-political circumstances that we as people are dealing with all across the world today and as Muslims are dealing with, and specifically we're dealing with over here in America, we see that amongst the most important themes that is always being discussed is this concept and notion of social justice, for instance. Yeah. Um, and Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, they both exemplified this particular aspect. Um, so it wasn't only coming with this compassion and mercy and justice, and absolutely that is something that has been uh, emphasized, but there has to be balance that they establish within, uh, within community and within society. Um, and to your second point in regards toward Prophet Isa alayhi salam, being one who established and affirmed those messages of the previous prophets, including Abraham and Moses. Uh, may God's peace and blessings be upon all of our prophets and our prophet and his family, alayhi salam. Um, yeah, we know that in our theology, we accept the idea that God has set down 124,000 prophets. And according to different narrations, 313 uh, messengers. And they all, present an ideology, a worldview toward their communities that are very, very similar. And as we believe that the Holy Prophet Muhammad is the affirmer and the finalizer of all of the previous prophets of God, and that's not taking anything away from Jesus salam, or from Moses or from Abraham. They're all uh, very unique and all have a very unique status in the eyes uh, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. So definitely we need to also speak of the Prophet Muhammad in the context of how he affirmed those previous prophets and that we as Muslims believe in this tenant of prophethood and that rejecting any of them is rejecting in reality all of them. Right. Um, and that's not only rejecting them as personalities but in regards to their messages, in regards to the ideologies that each and every one of them presented. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, and another interesting point is that, uh, I mean, of course, we know again that with um, certain types of Christianity that uh, developed, um, there were certain laws that were abrogated. I mean, I, I just made the point a little bit earlier about how uh, some scribes, as it says, maybe some Jewish scholars came to Jesus uh, salam, and asked them, which is the first commandment? And he actually uh, tells them the the very famous um, equivalent of Surah Al-Tawheed um, in, in Judaism, uh, which is, you know, the declaration of the oneness um, of God. And so he says, the first of the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the, the Lord like thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. And this is the first commandment. Um, so he he's actually not... Uh, scrapping that, you know, he's not bringing anything new. He he's saying, I'm I'm still affirming, I'm still affirming the commandments, um, and that yes, this commandment that was given uh, to the Jews is, I'm I'm still uh, acknowledging that commandment and still saying this commandment has to be upheld. And similarly, um, 
we see that uh, in um, uh, in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, Jesus alayhi salam also says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law uh, or uh, the, all the prophets. I have not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, um, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise uh, pass from the law till all will be fulfilled. Whoever right. therefore shall break one of these commandments and shall teach men so, which reminds me again of these verses in the Holy Quran where it says, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is talking about those who not only uh, break the laws of the, the, the Sharia or uh, go astray from the message, but encourage others to go astray. So he says, he shall be called the least in the kingdom um, of heaven. And whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And of course, then we have these verses in Holy Quran where the Holy Prophet again is, is saying, as we know, the Holy Quran says that it's not a new message. It's just there to, to confirm the law that came before. Um, so, uh, you know, neither of these uh, two texts, uh, the Bible and, the, or we could say the New Testament and the Holy Quran, are there as profoundly new or different messages from the messages of the previous prophets? No, yeah. I mean, even if you take a look, when, when we are reciting the whole of Quran, so many of the anecdotes of the previous prophets are mentioned uh, in regards to the anecdote of Abraham, a story of Moses and the Pharaoh. And we see that the most um, oft mentioned personality within the whole of Quran is the personality of Moses, for instance. Yeah. And what's unique is that when we come toward the message of the Prophet, he several times tells his companions, be it in the whole Quran or in the Hadith literature, where we have evidences to suggest that he came toward the faith communities who were living during that time and affirm that their faith uh, has some historical backing within the religion of Islam. Um, and we come forth and we see a narration that's, uh, sorry, a verse in the whole Quran, uh, in Surah Al-Ahzab, I believe verse number 40, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ma Muhammadan Aba Ahadan min rijalikum, that the Holy Prophet is not a father of any of your men, walakin Rasulullah, but he's the messenger of God, wa khatimin nabiyin, right? And he is the final and he's the seal of all of the prophets. Yeah. So in the Quranic uh, dialogue that takes place, there's an affirmation that the Prophet Muhammad is the final Prophet who continues that tradition and the message and the belief system of all of the previous Prophets um, when it comes toward the law that he presents as an abrogation of those uh, laws that had preceded him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and when you take a look at a lot of those passages that you mentioned, uh, there is a recognition of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus alayhi salam, uh, for all of the previous prophets who have come before. And at the same time, we have narrations in which, for instance, the prophet would call Jesus and Moses and Abraham, my brother. Um, right. uh, so there are so many of these parallel, pa parallels and similarities that we find within even their methods and styles of preaching, which is something very unique to take a look at. Yes, uh, yes, exactly. Very interesting as well how they appeal to the people. I mean, another thing is that, um, you know, something that, again, many Christian uh, groups like to do is to say that, you know, Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, carried arms, whereas Jesus, al-Islam, never carried arms. Um, but we have to say that they were living in different contexts, in different societies. So uh, that actually, um, inshallah, we'll look a bit further at, uh, at an article uh, about uh, Jesus actually, again, affirming these previous prophets who were, as this scholar has said, warrior kings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so again, what often happens is that Jesus alayhi salam, is taken out of context and said, well, he, you know, he didn't bear arms, whereas we see that, you know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, bore arms. And so therefore Jesus was peace loving, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know, just, you know, liked war. When in actual fact we see that, you know, one of, probably one of the reasons that Jesus alayhi salam, um, didn't carry arms was that he was living under the, under the Roman Empire. Exactly. Um, so he wasn't living in the type of society where, 
you could gather an army. He, if he had gathered uh, an armed group, there was no way he could have beaten the, uh, the armies of the Roman Empire at that time. Yeah, I mean, every single individual throughout history, you have to take a look at them through the historical lens in which they were living in. And um, to suggest that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it was a very violent man because he had an army. We also have to understand that he was the head of state um, as well as a prophet. Um, and we can't take the prophet out of that context when understanding um, his life and the method and the spell of him um, are marginalized in that community. And you take a look and you see that during the first several years, the first 10, 11 years of the prophetic message, while the Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca, we see that he was so far away from establishing any sort of defense force for his community. Rather, they were uh, physically abused and verbally abused. Um, the famous incident when the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him and his family, went toward the city of Ta'if and the children came and threw rocks at him. He didn't uh, respond in any sort of violent way, but only when the Prophet establishes um, his government within the city of Medina, do we see that type of, um, do we see this building of an army and the bearing of arms and so on and so forth. And a lot of it is to just protect uh, the women and the children within the Muslim community, as well as faith groups outside of the Muslim community. And that is something that has been spoken about and the Prophet has been defended and books have been written and articles and blog posts and so on and so forth all across uh, social media. So. I would hate to get into that right now. Yeah. But again, Prophet Isa, السلام, Prophet Muhammad, uh, instead of focusing a lot on these uh, differences that people present, it's, it, it's incredibly vital that we speak about a lot of the similarities yeah. uh, uh, in, their, in their messages. Um, verse states, that uh, call the um, Christian brethren, Jewish brethren toward those dimensions that we all have in similarity yeah. uh, with one another. And when we come toward this stark difference that is often presented, again, we have to understand it in light of a historical context. Uh, and we cannot just take that out of a vacuum and um, present different perspectives uh, upon our own understanding right. of things. Thank you. Um, uh, and another point is that um, they, they both uh, indicated that uh, after their message, you know, after they have delivered their message, uh, there will be s uh, division in humanity. There will be groups that are, uh, you know, splitting up after they have delivered their message. So we have again... Sorry, I think the audio cut out. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear, can you hear me at all? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, I think, uh, inshallah, we will try to get uh, Sheikh Faiz Jafar back. Uh, and we have just five minutes till we are going to break. So, yes, the point that uh, I was going to raise, inshallah, hopefully we will, we will have him back as well, um, is that there is going to be division. Um, the divisions that we see that we've seen over the centuries um, have been predicted by the prophets, um, all prophets. And so we see in um, Surah Al-Baqarah, um, in verse, uh, two, uh, chapter 2, verse 253, where the Holy Prophet uh, taught, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, um, or as, as the Holy Quran says, those apostles we endowed with gifts, some above others, to one of them, Allah spoke. Others he raised to degrees of honor. To Jesus, the son of Mary, we gave clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. If Allah had so willed, succeeding generations would not have fought among each other. After clear signs had come to them, but they chose to wrangle, some believing and others rejecting. If Allah had so willed, they would not have fought each other. His plans in Holy Quran saying that hu humanity, all these different groups, did not start to split apart until after the proofs had been uh, given to them. 
Uh, and so this is really, I suppose, a reflection upon human nature. It's a reflection upon the fact that, well, the proof has come to you <clears throat> and it's quite clear and it's quite simple, um, but you are starting to give it another interpretation and um, condemn others who have made a different interpretation and, and so on. And we see this all the way down throughout history. And the question may be, well, why did God allow all these divisions uh, to happen? And as the Holy Quran says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that these divisions are happening, but that he has a, a plan to be fulfilled. Uh, you know, the, the field, we could say, the, the, the field of free will that the human being has is a field in which we are tested, um, by which uh, we make our true nature known and so this is the, the this is the testing ground for the soul and this is why you know humanity has been given this uh, free will so similarly uh, in the bible jesus alayhi salam uh, also says that whoever therefore shall confess me before men him i will confess also so whoever testifies and stands by me whoever testifies to my message and stands by me before men before humanity him I will confess also before my father so which is in heaven so I will uh, be a witness for him um, in the next life but whoever shall deny me before men him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven so whoever rejects the message of Jesus alayhi salam, uh, likewise Jesus alayhi salam, will not be a a witness or we could say an intercessor for him in the next life now then, very interestingly, he says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is a very key line, and I remember trying to bring it up with um, some of our Christian brothers and sisters, uh, and saying, well, you know, generally the stereotype about Jesus, alayhi salam, is that um, he was a pacifist, as we know, uh, and that he had uh, preached forgiveness, which he did indeed preach forgiveness. Uh, but for some reason, they didn't want to hear uh, this line where he says, I've co not come to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own. own household so someone's enemies will be from their own household he that loves a father or mother more than me again saying that you know the commitment to this path which is the path to god um is going to bring about enmity among your friends among your family you know there are going to be people who are going to become enemies to you yes there is going to be division uh, if you are following this path there is going to be um, this division in, in society. Not everyone's going to get on, and we can see this happening. So, uh, likewise, there is going to be division, but it's all part of a, a particular unfolding of the destiny of humanity. We're just going to go to break. Inshallah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Assalamualaikum, welcome back to Ahlul Bayt Live on Ahlul Bayt TV for the last part of our show running through to 9.30pm uh, GMT uh, and uh, we're just again talking about the similarities between uh, Prophet Jesus السلام, and Prophet Muhammad السلام, as well and uh, we have on the line Sheikh Faiz Jafar from Canada uh, so inshallah hopefully we will be able to run through, can you hear me? Yes, sister, from the okay. United States. Okay. Oh, from the States, sorry, from the United States. Um, so, uh, we were just talking about um, how both Jesus السلام, and Prophet Muhammad uh, السلام, talk about how there will be uh, division after they have brought this uh, message. Uh, and uh, as we can see that um, in Surah Al-Baqarah, where it says that... Um, uh, if, if, if Allah had so willed, succeeding generations would not have fought among each other 
after clear signs had come to them, but they chose to wrangle, some believing and others rejecting. If Allah had so willed, he would not have, uh, they would not have fought each other, but Allah fulfilleth his plan. So, um, and then we have um, in the Bible as well, where uh, Jesus says that um, uh, it's a slightly different type of di division, but very interestingly, he says that um, I, uh, he says, whoever therefore shall confess me uh, before men, him I will confess before my father. So whoever testifies to following Jesus, he will act as a witness or intercessor for them before God. And then he says, um, uh, I came not to send peace, but a sword. So that, you know, um, people who choose to follow the way um, of Jesus uh, will find you with other on the line. So we're just going to take this call and see, uh, welcome uh, our caller and see what uh, they are ha having to say. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Uh, can I make uh, a point uh, or uh, I want to... Yes, um, sister, please go. The topic, please. Yes. Hello? Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, the source, uh, uh, there are two sources uh, of uh, this deen where, where the, the deen is, came from uh, Allah Ta'ala uh, through Prophet and uh, the Book of Allah. Yes. Uh, these are the two main sources of, uh, it's, it's mentioned in Quran, uh, but uh, afterwards, uh, people started doing their own things and they started uh, uh, changing the basic uh, foundation of this deen, uh, uh, like adding things in, uh, in deen, deen from themselves, which, which uh, contrasts to the, uh, the foundation of this deen. So uh, uh, when uh, Allah Ta'ala uh, appointed those personalities uh, to give uh, this deen in, in, in its original form, uh, who are we that uh, we change uh, the basic principle of Islam and the whole structure of Islam uh, according to our own uh, wish or according to our own needs? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, at, at the time it's, it's very difficult to, to follow some principles, but uh, uh, at last we are the beneficial of, uh, of that, uh, uh, that, you know, uh, anything which clashes with the basic principle of Islam uh, is not acceptable, it's not then Islam, it's, uh, it's something else. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, Imam, like Imam Hussain, uh, his biggest sacrifice was to secure this Islam in its uh, original form, but afterwards uh, people changed the whole, whole structure of the uh, of Islam and, and they uh, added things which were which Imam never did in his life. Yes. So that was my main point. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling in, uh, sister. And uh, I don't know if uh, Sheikh Faz Jafar, if you managed mm -hmm. to hear uh, the point. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I heard it. And I, and, I, and, I, and I think that's exactly what we're uh, what we're trying to demonstrate over here is that uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to uh, revive the core teachings of the prophetic messages, um, those messages that take us closer toward uh, understanding our Creator and understanding our responsibilities toward God and the prophets. And toward community and society in general. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, to the uh, caller, to the you. dear sister. Thank you, sister. Um, so, yes, I mean, this point also about that, that is made in the Bible, um, I was saying that, um, you know, again, often the stereotype about Jesus, alayhi salam, is that, like we we're saying, he's a pacifist and, you know, he, he preached only, you know, forgiveness. I mean, he did preach forgiveness, but here he has said that, uh, you know, I have not come to bring peace but a sword, meaning that there are going to be clashes, there are going to be fights, there's going to be divisions, um, because not everyone is going to accept this message. So, mm. you know, for those who are following me, 
they are going to have enemies within their own families. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, he says that uh, he that loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So he's, you know, it's very interesting because it, it's, it's really demanding uh, of his followers that dedication, you know, that willingness to sacrifice and to place uh, this message, you know, following this path above all. It, it's not about a kind of uh, relativistic, uh, you know, kind of a compromise, we could say, with um, a variety of uh, different principles. Uh, on the contrary, he's saying, you know, stick to this path and, uh, and you know, then I will be able to re represent you before God. Sure, yeah. And when we take a look at both of the passages, um, the, the dimensions or the manifestations of this division are, uh, are very, very, very different. Um, but at the same time, they speak toward this core idea that like staying on the path is, is challenging, right? And it's yeah. very, very difficult. And there are going to be hurdles that, that people need to, uh, need to overcome. So when we take a look at the verse of the Quran that you had quoted uh, in chapter 2, yeah. uh, verse 200. Fifty-three, in which the Quran states that um, if Allah had so will, succeeding generations would not have fought amongst each other after clear them leaving, would not have fought each other. But Allah fulfills His plan. Yeah. Um, so it's not the idea that God wants division; it's the idea that that's just the nature of man, right? Yeah. Um, that we're not a submissive creation in the same way that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala desires from us to be. Uh, in the whole Quran, in another verse. Um, God mentions that that we as a human being are vanum and jahula. We oppress ourselves and we're a very ignorant creation. And we create these divisions because of our lack of submission and following in the footsteps of the divine representatives of God. And when we take a look at the passage uh, that you had quoted from from uh, from the Bible as well, in which Prophet uh, Jesus alayhi salam He's speaking to his followers and telling them that, look, there's going to be division amongst you, even in your own households. Yeah. Um, and we see that taking place. It's very, very evident and very, very obvious. Uh, but again, it goes back toward this idea that not everyone, um, though we are able to proclaim with our tongue very easily, not everyone is, to, not everyone is ready to take that step of absolute um, submission. And we take a look at it and we see examples from you know, the companions of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam, as well, that some individuals, personalities, they figured that they didn't want to get involved in the Battle of Karbala because yeah. they felt that it was a political dispute and not something that Imam Hussein should involve himself in. Many people would come toward the Imam and tell him, hey, I, we don't think this is a really great idea that you're going to go and fight and take your family. Um, it was an all about idea of a test of submission toward um, the companions, uh, the test of the submission of the companions yeah. toward their imam and the divine representative of God. Yeah, that's a very good parallel. Uh, you know, when we look at the narrative of Karbala, how, uh, you know, there were those that wanted to stop Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, uh, and there were those who, you know, I mean, eventually it ended up being just a very small number of people who, uh, stood by him. And, uh, and of course, yes, those who were absolutely dead against him, uh, members of, of, you know, Quraysh, you know, families, people that, you know, he would have grown up with from childhood were, were very against him uh, as well. And of course, uh, there would have been, there were family members as well of his wives and of his companions who were against those family members as well. Uh, sorry, that they were against his wives and um, and against those who stood by him. So they had members of their own families who were against what they were doing. They were against them uh, standing by the Imam uh, as well. So it seems that both Jesus alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him are are, are saying that uh, yes, there is you know there is going to be this division. It's not something that Allah desires, uh, but it, there is a, an unfolding destiny in this. And of course, the truth, inshallah, will be made known at the end of you know, this journey of humanity.
really. Um, the next uh, point I was, I was just going to bring, of course, is that, yes, they both also campaigned uh, for social justice. Uh, I'm, we don't have to talk about this too much, but this is also something that many people on these websites that are trying to polarize Jesus, alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam, uh, they miss out these details um, where, as it says in Holy Quran, you know, it's encouraging us to be uh, merciful to the poor, to the widows, to the orphans, uh, to you know, um, try to encourage reconciliation among people, uh, to release those who have been in debt, so not to oppress people or uh, with, with debt, but also to assist them out of that oppression, um, and to have you know compassion for the traveller, for the wayfarer, or someone who's living on the street. So, I mean, Jesus, alayhi salam, of course, is depicted as very much a man of the people who had um, compassion for the poor, compassion for for everybody uh, around him, whatever their social status. And this is something that's not often highlighted. Uh, about the message of Islam and the Holy Quran as well, but we find it is the same message here about you know having having compassion for all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, though it's seemingly depicted that the Prophet is a very uh, aggressive personality and um, uh, violent, and he's a politician and so on and so forth. Again, just the understanding of the life of the Prophet and the reason why so many people flocked toward the faith was because of his personality. Um, and again, that's not taking anything away from Prophet Jesus alayhi salam because they exemplify those same sublime qualities in both of their blessed lives. Um, but we take a look and we see the so many anecdotes that are often narrated um, in our traditions. We speak about how the Prophet would engage with even his enemies or with his friends. Yeah. or uh, with women and with children and with the orphan and with the widow and the comprehensive lifestyle of the prophet we take a look at the verses of the whole quran the emphasis on taking care of orphans and widows the emphasis on uh on standing up against any sort of injustice against any sort of oppression these are uh, embedded within all faith communities yeah. um you know and it's something that today when we try to uh, build links with other faith communities uh, all across like the Western world and which should really be happening all across the world is that the one theme that we can all embrace is this idea of standing for social justice. Everyone believes that we have to stand with the oppressed person, right? Yeah. Um, numerous narrations of the Prophet to his companions, the whole uh, of the subject and it's something that uh, we need to do our very best to illuminate on a day-to-day -day basis within our lives, so people have a have a more positive image of Islam. Yeah. Uh, and that again, that's for any sort of justice. Thank you. Um, and uh, I think we have to probably just about ten minutes till we finish. Now, there's a very interesting article uh, by a particular writer uh, online that was highlighting actually. The type of person that, you know, the type of personality that Jesus alayhi salam is in his second coming, in his return. Um, and uh, he is saying that, um, as he says here, the comparisons between Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the warrior prophet, and Jesus, peace be upon him, as the pac pacifist, are faulty. Um, for, and it says, that for one thing, many. There were many warrior prophets in the Judeo-Christian tradition before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, so we have uh, Moses, Joshua, Samson, David, Saul, uh, and that Moses, alayhi salam, was the prototypical. I mean, he was he was a he was an example of a warrior uh, prophet. Um, and and of course, as I was saying at the beginning, that you know Jesus, alayhi salam, acknowledges. Uh, Prophet Ibrahim and Musa alayhi salam as uh, those who are coming before him uh, in this tradition. Um, and uh, just heading a little bit uh, ahead, um, we see that uh, looking at his, what's going to happen with, 
the second coming, al -Islam, Jesus' second coming, is very similar to what we find uh, in the books about Imam Mahdi, -Islam, that it's going to be a time when those who, who denied the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acted unjustly in the land are going to face, you know, a very tough and difficult time. Um, so it actually says that Jesus, you know, that the Messiah is going to be, um, actually this is in the work of Maimonides, uh, it says that the Messiah, when he comes, will be fighting uh, God's wars. Uh, we see also that um, Jesus, alayhi salam, has been seen as a Davidic king, someone who is following in the path of uh, prophet uh, Dawood as well as a, as a king prophet. He is a he's of the house of David. He is a descendant of you know Ali Dawood, the descent um, the, as a descendant of uh, David. And then uh, we have an, another uh, quotation in the Bible. In uh, we see in Revelations that um, you know he's going to release the wrath of God. Uh, every tribe on earth will mourn uh, because of him. Uh, the unbelievers are going to look with trembling upon Jesus, alayhi salam. Uh, so, you know, again, this is quite a different picture from what we find people selectively picking from the New Testament as Jesus indeed being this kind of pacifist figure, rather very similar to Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam, at the end, that actually he, he's going to uh, bring this uh, justice and likewise retribution for those who have been uh, unjust and oppressors. I find this quite interesting, and it's interesting that people often don't mention this aspect of him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly interesting, and we take a look at um, the New Testament, there are several um, notions of the establishment of the divine kingdom of heaven on earth, and they use that particular phrase, divine kingdom of heaven on earth, when the second coming of Jesus takes place. Uh, in which he is able to create like this sort of utopia of a community, of a society, where everyone is able to live very peacefully uh, and void of any sort of oppression. But to get to that level, there is going to be um, an initial struggle and a lot of obstacles that are taking place. Um, and what people, just to open up a quick parenthesis over here, that what people often um, uh, misappropriate toward Ma Mahdi, is that he's just going to come and create all of this bloodshed when it's not going to be like that because uh, many narrations, they also point toward the idea that in the same way that the prophet began his mission, Imam Mahdi will begin his mission. And that is by his etiquette and by his law and by his mercy. They will not send the prophet except to be a mercy to mankind. And when he is working السلام, with prophet Jesus, they are going to establish this uh, unique state but uh, it's going to begin with that mercy and with that compassion. But for those who are consistently causing corruption, again, we don't believe in this uh, um, um, idealistic sort of version of, 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 the, of humanity. And unfortunately, just not the case. It hasn't been history where everyone's just going to submit to someone's you know, good behavior or because they're, they're told to. Yeah. Uh, 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 but they will be oppressors and cause corruption on the earth. For people who are openly and willing to do that, see that Jesus, um, as mentioned in the whole of Quran, as mentioned in the New Testament, will, will be amongst those who kind of uh, reflect or, or illuminate that, that wrath that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know, demonstrates upon the enemies and those who are very violent and cause corruption mm -hmm. before, um, and as mentioned in the whole of Quran as well. Um, so it's incredibly important. Uh, and really interesting uh, note in regards to these parallels between this and Imam Mahdi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for uh, also that um, point about how uh, the you know the mission of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, may Allah hasten his reappearance, uh, is also going to be completely within uh, the pattern of the prophets who have gone before as you say, teaching through akhlaq, um, encouraging people to behave uh, justly, to um, uh, get rid of corruption, uh, have mercy, uh, treat you know, the neighbor as they would be treated themselves. And so, as you say, it is, it is this mission for reforming 
the society and uh, it is only after that particular testing period that we see that uh, then you know the people who are trying to uh, act unjustly and to continue with their uh, corrupt uh, behavior are not going to be given any more leeway basically I mean they've been given leeway for centuries and they're not going to be given any more leeway. Um, this would yeah, and sorry, to cut you off. just to add to that point, it's kind of like the nature of who we are as people, right? Um, you can you can only be merciful uh, so much, or you can only be forgiving so much towards someone who's constantly committing crimes yeah. uh, until you get to the extent where there has to be some sort of justice and some sort of accountability for one's actions. So the way that people read the narrations is such that oh wow, like. These are really, really violent, you know, it's going to be a really, really violent future you know, that, we, that we hold for ourselves. And the language is very, very harsh, right? Uh, yeah. For instance, that narration or the point that you mentioned that every tribe will mourn, uh, as mentioned in the Bible, I believe, um, and that people get very, very scared by that. Again, it's, it, it, for us believers, for us people of faith, for us people who um, fulfill our responsibilities toward God and toward the prophets of the community, you know, inshallah, we're going to be okay. We don't need to worry about it. But again, it's for those who need some sort of accountability for their constant uh, corruption that they're causing on earth to themselves, toward families, communities, that sometimes you just want an end for that. And the only way to create that system of absolute justice is to, um, is to have a authority figure with them in, 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 the, in the appropriate respects. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We've just got a, a couple of minutes. Of course, I was also going to say, which I just said it earlier in the program, also that because um, both Jesus alayhi salam and uh, Prophet Muhammad um, alayhi salam emphasize that being one of their followers means that we follow the commandments, uh, that, you know, the, 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 the divine way, the divine law. Uh, and this is not easy for even those who will profess to follow them. Uh, I think both Jesus salam, and Prophet Muhammad salam, have said there, there are those who claim to be their followers, but who, uh, who are not through their deeds. So that, uh, you know, that kind of uh, the, the, the time that we are, people will be facing the consequences of their actions, they're not going to be given any more leeway, can still apply to those who are professing to be the followers of, of these great figures. Um, so it's still a kind of a wake-up call, even for those who are, who are claiming to follow them. Yeah, I mean, with, with professing belief comes responsibility, right? Yeah. Uh, in this hadith from Amal, uh, it says, it says, Al-Iman ma'rafata bil qalb wal qarar bil nisan wal amal bil arkan that um, faith is in three phases. The first one is the proclamation, the belief with the heart, testimony by the tongue, and then it comes with action. Right? Yeah. That most, most of humanity has gone astray, uh, except for those who believe and those who do good deeds. So um, it is a burden upon us, right? It's a responsibility that we have, yeah. that if I follow Jesus, if I'm a follower of Muhammad, if I'm a follower of both of them, if I'm a follower of all of the prophets and the imams of Ahlul Bayt, there is a certain responsibility that I have toward God. And I remember a narration uh, in which Imam Sadiq one day tells his companion Mufadl. Father ibn Umar, of course, is a companion who is uh, of high ma'rafa and uh, high imamality, like they say, someone who has an incredibly deep understanding yeah. of who the Imams are. The narration speaks that he is Sahib al Sir, he is a man who holds the secrets of Ahlul Bayt. And one day he was. Uh, uh, the imam had heard that he was perhaps speaking in a way or acting in a manner that was not befitting to someone like him to speak. And he tells him, Ya Mufatal Innal Hassan min Ahadin Hassan wa minka Ahsan bi Kanatika minna. Oh Mufadal, whenever anyone does a good deed, it's a good deed. When you do a good deed, it's a really good deed because of your proximity relationship with us. And right. he states, Ya Mufadal Innal Qabih min kun Ahad Qabih wa minka Aqbah bi Kanatika minna. And whenever someone does a bad deed, it's just a bad deed. You do a bad deed, it's a you know, really bad deed. It's something really not appropriate because of your relationship with us. So we need to make sure that we're understanding our responsibilities in light of who we are following, in light of who we are uh, representatives of uh, in terms of faith. And God is going to hold us 
acceptable at for first time. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Faiz Jaffer, for, for coming online and uh, for your patience uh, you with our system. And uh, salam to, to everyone, to salam to your family as well. And inshallah, we hope to have you again uh, online in future programs with a better line as well. Thank you very exactly. much for your time. Thank you. And uh, thanks very much for our viewers for watching. Thanks also for your calls as well. It's always nice to hear who is out there. Uh, inshallah, I will be back again possibly on Saturday. Uh, and if not, definitely on Monday. Inshallah, wish you good night. Asalaamu Alaikum. Ahlul Bayt TV, the holy household for every household.